Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we're going to start um, uh, the, the section of uh, network addressing. Um, we, we have talked about addressing before. It's a way for us to identify where the message is coming from, whether it's coming from a specific application or a specific host or a specific network or a specific device. Uh, uh, so the addressing is just a way for us to identify where the message is going from and where is it going to. So we have, um, we have three or four types of, of addressing um, that we will talk about. We have um, uh, uh, the most important one is, the, is layer three addresses. And layer three addresses is what we refer uh, to them as IP addresses. Um, and these are uh, uh, used to move uh, data from one local network to another local network. Okay? Um, the layer two addresses, or what we commonly refer to them as um, physical addresses, these physical addresses are used to communicate between devices, one device to another. So, for example, layer two addresses or data link layer address, it includes the, uh, uh, the physical address. And this, this address is actually hard-coded, burned into the, the hardware. So, uh, 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 so this, uh, this address is actually a permanent address per device. Um, so, if you have multiple... Uh, 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 cards on your on your machine. Each card will have a different physical address. So each card will communicate over a specific type of networks, and uh, uh, and will have, as a result, will have a different physical address. Layer two is concerned with the delivery of messages between uh, uh, one device to another within the local area network within the local area network. So from, from one local area network to another, we don't use the, the physical address. We usually use the layer 3 address or the IP address, as we will see. So in a LAN, for example, in a LAN using Ethernet, this address is called medium access control address. So this is specific for, uh, for Ethernet. We call it MAC address, which some of you are familiar with what MAC address is. Um, so if you do IP config on, on Windows or something, it gives you the IP address of the host and it gives you the uh, physical address of everything, every single uh, card uh, or every single adapter that's used to communicate over any type of network. For example, if you have, if we ha if you have wireless and Ethernet, then in that case you have two physical addresses, one for the wireless card and the other one for the Ethernet card, which is the common uh, setting that we have. All of us have Ethernet and, and Wi-Fi. So in that case, you will have two physical addresses. So when two end devices, <clears throat> when two end devices communicate on the, um, on the local Ethernet, the frames are exchanged between them, uh, will have to contain the source address and the destination address which are the physical addresses, source and destination, physical addresses, or what we call the MAC address. So that's how it looks like visually. So um, if, if uh, one source here wants to send uh, uh, data on, uh, uh, to a specific destination on the same local area network, so this is the same local area network. Um, so the connection to the, to the router is to take it to another network or to the internet. So anything above the router is a separate network or another local area network or to connect me to the internet. So, uh, so all the switches, all these switches constitute one local area network. Okay. So uh, 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 if I want to send to a specific uh, uh, node over this uh, uh, network, um, then how can I identify this? Using the physical address, as we said, or the MAC address. So uh, if you can, you can, one second comment, the second. 
<coughs> so in that case, we use the physical address. So this, uh, uh, this figure here illustrates the fact that each node will have to have a physical address. Of course, this physical address is, is abbreviated, is, uh, is, is, uh, is cut, uh, just for clarity, because the, the actual physical address is much longer than this. But let's assume that you, we have any, uh, any address here that identifies the card or the, 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 that device physically. So if, if this node has an address of AAA, wants to send to uh, 888, for example, then the, uh, uh, the, the destination address will be what? 888, and the source address will be AAA. That's simple. Um, so that's that's the, uh, the, the, the this is the destination address and the source address. So that's simple. <clears throat> Type. What if I want to communicate over the internet? If I want to communicate something from this node over the internet, I don't I don't necessarily have to know the physical address of the ultimate destination over the internet. I don't I don't need to to know it. So, um, so I do need to know all the physical addresses of all the devices within the local area network. Because it's not scalable and it's not feasible for me to know the physical address of every single device over the internet. That's not possible. Uh, so within lo one local area network, I can, I can get this information through these switches, they can, <clears throat> they can let everybody know the physical address of, of all the devices over this local area network. So that's possible. So if I want to communicate over the internet, my destination will be the, the, the boundary of this local area network, which in that case is, is the router. Okay, so if I want to think to the internet, all I need to know is the physical address of the router that gets me there. Okay, so if you send anything to the router, the router will then take uh, 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 this frame and then it will extract the IP address then to know which network to send it to. As we said, the IP address is the one that we use to communicate from one network to another, right? So once you send it to the router, the router will then know that it has to be sent over the internet. So it has to extract the IP address in that case to know where to send it to. Okay? <clears throat> so that's how it works. So layer two is within that local area network boundary. Once I get out, I have to send it to a router. The router will then extract the IP, the IP header and from it, it will extract the IP address to know where it, where it is to. Okay, so with that said, for the physical address in particular, we have two types. We have two common types uh, of, uh, uh, of communication. Uh, <clears throat> so, we can have two devices. We said that the physical address is, uh, facilitates the communication between two devices, right? Yeah. So, we have two devices connected point to point. We call them point to point. That's different from peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer, we'll talk about it. But this is point-to-point, -point, which means that this is a physical connection using wire that connects two nodes only. In other words, this is like a pipe. If you send anything from here, there's no other way for it to go except this way. If you send from this way, there's no other way to, for this to go except this way. Okay? Is there any other configuration? Yes, of course. We can have a, a configuration that, you know, you have one <coughs> big line and you have multiple um, nodes connected to it. So, in that case, when I send any information from here, so it will, it will, it will be going over this line. Anything, any one of these nodes we we'll listen to it. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so I have to identify which one that should receive it, which I, which I normally do using the physical address. So um, 
If this one, for example, is, uh, is, is A, B, C, D, then if A wants to send to D, then the, 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 the frame that gets sent will have a destination address of D. So that's, that's okay. The, the special thing about this configuration, though, is that this line is shared amongst all these nodes. So what's different here? The difference is that it's like uh, you're sending a flow of water uh, and you have multiple outlets. Okay, so you have to sort of block all these out outlets except the one that you wanted to go to. Um, and, uh, and what happens if, if two nodes are trying to send at the same time? So A wants to send to D, and at the same time B wants to send to C. <clears throat> what will happen? Who should send first? Okay. Priority? Hmm? And have a priority maybe? Yeah, well, there, there are... You know, there are so many mechanisms that can be used to, uh, uh, to resolve that issue, which we will definitely study in details in the course. But for now, you just need to appreciate the fact that there is a fundamental difference between those two configurations. And in the, in the network, we use these two configurations very commonly. Uh, we normally use the point-to-point -to, -point to connect between routers over the Internet. Normally. Okay? And we use this within the local area network. And the, within the local area network, we connect every, everything to a switch or to a hub. And a switch or a hub creates some kind of a shared medium. Again, we'll, we'll talk about that in details. But, um, <clears throat> but this shared medium has, has a, a little bit of a, a, a specific and special characteristics, which we will have to uh, pay attention to. So... Uh, with that said, the. Uh, so, what is the fundamental difference between that? The fundamental difference is the fact that uh, uh, this, this um, medium is now shared between all these nodes. So, if you want to send a message here, first you have to specify the physical address. The physical address here is very important. Whereas here, you don't have to specify physical address. Even if, you, even if you put any physical address, any physical address, usually you put all Fs. Okay? So for point-to-point -point communication, you don't need to use any physical address. Use all Fs and it will reach to the other side because there is no other way. But here, you have, you, you must specify physical address. That's one fundamental difference. The other difference is that, is the fact that when two of these wants to send over the shared medium, then we will have to organize this. Right? So we will have to arrange who will send first. Because if both send at the same time, uh, that's, 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 uh, that's a very critical situation. We call it collision. It's like two cars are going to the same road. So we call it actually collision to, 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 to emphasize the fact that none of these cars will be able to get through. In fact, that's a damaging situation. Because the two frames will, will now not be delivered on the other side. So that, this is a fundamental uh, difference between those two configurations. And again, those are commonly used in network. And, uh, and this example here illustrates an end-to-end -end communication and how the, the physical address is, is actually being used uh, in, the, uh, in, in, in this end-to-end -end communication. Um, uh, so, the question here that we want to answer is that uh, what are the addresses that should be uh, in the packet? So, if we want, if we know that this node wants to send to this node, A wants to send to D, okay, and the IP address is like this, and the MAC address is like this on 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 both machines. So now. We know that when we hit a switch, we're still within the same, the same local area network, okay? So when you go past this router, this means that we're going outside the boundary of a local area network, and we'll go through the WAN or wide area network, and we connect through multiple routers until we get to another local area network where it has to be delivered to D. So how does this work? Uh, what is the physical address and the... Uh, uh, layer 3 or IP address uh, in every single point here. 
Okay? For example, here we know that if we want to send beyond this router, then we have to specify the physical address of, of the router, of this port of the router, because on the router, every single port has a different physical address. <clears throat> okay, so we have to send it to this physical address of the router, which means that the destination physical address will be this. Okay? But then the IP address will be, will be this. The IP address itself will not change. It, the IP address of the destination will be the, the, the destination IP address. Okay? So, that, which means that the IP address end-to-end -end will never change throughout the communication. But when we reach here, okay, when, when we go from this router to this router, the physical address will have to be changed because this is a device-to-device -device communication and the physical address of that port is different from this port and it's different from this port. So we have to specify the physical address at every single point. Okay? So this is a, this is a, this is a very important uh, yeah, any concept now. Go ahead. We have just said, like, in uh, TCP, you mm -hmm. don't have to specify this. Yeah, address. yeah. We'll go through that now. Yes, so, yeah, so here, uh, uh, in normal cases, I have to specify the physical address mm -hmm. of this device and this device. However, it's a special case for PPP, I don't have to. Okay, but this is because this is a, a PPP protocol or a point-to-point. Uh, uh, protocol in which case any physical address will do so if you put all F's it will work because it's uh, it's one wire one pipe connecting those two devices so I don't have to specify however within this LAN by the way pay attention to the fact that um, this switch might connect other other devices here and this and this router might connect to another switch which connects to other devices here all these are hidden from this picture, which means that this switch will create some kind of a shared medium, which is the, uh, uh, the, <coughs> the, uh, the broadcast uh, configuration that we talked about, or the shared configuration that we talked about, okay? However, from, from this side to this side, this is a point-to-point, -point. so even if we don't specify any specific physical address, it will work. So we'll, we'll see that, how that works in animation now. <clears throat> so layer three addresses, layer three are uh, primarily designed to communicate packets over from one network, from one local area network to another, okay? At the boundary of each LAN, there is a router that when you send to the physical address of the port of that router, this router will then extract the data link layer header, and then it will extract also the IP header, okay? Switches do not, do not deal with IP header in any way. That's the, the main difference, and again, we'll go again over this later. Switches do not understand what IP address is, or do not understand what IP header is. So when, it, when, it, when, the, when the frame goes to the router, the router will then extract the header and the footer, th these two, will throw them away because it knows that the physical address in this frame is its own physical address, so it receives it, and then it extracts the IP header, and then it reads <coughs> the destination IP address from that header to know where it should send it to. It should send it to another router, and this router will send it to another router until it reaches the local area network where the destination is, okay? Um, so once the path is determined, the path here is, is determined based on some end-to-end -end information on the router. So the router knows um, many local area networks within a specific domain, which we will not <clears throat> talk about the details for it now. We'll talk about it later, but um, we just need to know that routers, they have some information where to send uh, 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 these packets based on some information that it has, some routing information that it has. <clears throat> Until the frame reaches to the local area network of the destination. In that case, the router will deliver it directly to the destination with the physical address. 
The physical address uh, uh, is known by the router on this local area network, but it's not known by the, the source that sent this message originally. That's how it looks like in animation. So if I want to send uh, this content uh, from X to Y, okay, and X has this IP address and has this physical address, and this device or this router here has uh, 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 this physical address, and it has the uh, IP address of 192.168.1.0, this is the IP address of this local area network, okay, of the entire local area network. Because we said that the IP is used to facilitate the communication from one network to another. I know that we talked about the fact that IP address identifies a host, not a network. And that's why we have this zero here. Usually, the, the, the IP address of a network has zero at the end, or maybe has two zeros here. Okay, so um, hosts do not have zeros in the IP address in any of the in any of these numbers. <clears throat> okay, so, which means that any host on this network will have uh, uh, in, in replacement of this of this zero here, it will have one, two, three, four to indicate that this is a host. But if this is zero, this indicates that this is the IP of this network. Okay, um, for now. Again, we have an, a, a, a full chapter about subnetting and, and IPs of, of, uh, of a network and IP of a host and, and so on and so forth. So again, we'll address this in details. But you just, what you need to know now is the fact that the physical address is used to, to facilitate the communication between two devices on the same local area network. Okay, And when we move from one network to another, we need another piece of information, which in that case is the IP. So, <clears throat> as we said, when we move the frame from, from one point to another, of course here, there could be some switches, hops. I don't care, okay? So this is a full local area network which uses some shared medium, uh, uh, switches, hops, uh, uh, wires, wireless, I don't care, okay? As long as I didn't hit a router, this is, for me, is a local area network, okay? So, um, <clears throat> So now, we just need to know what is the physical source address and destination address in every single point here as the frame goes from X to Y. That's what we need to, uh, to answer. So the first thing we need to know is ba uh, uh, basically the, uh, the IP header or the network, the, uh, the, the network layer header will have this source address, which is the, uh, 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 this is the destination address, sorry, of of y and this is the source address of of x okay um, and this will not change through the communication endpoint okay because this is the the host ip this is not a network ip this is the host ip and that's why we don't have zeros okay <clears throat> so that will be kept in the ip header and it will not change throughout the communication so that's easy so this first part we 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 took care of so the question now is that when I add a header, when I add the header of the data link layer, which physical address should I put for the source and the destination? Knowing that now I'm here. Okay. So at X, what is the first uh, 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 destination physical address I should have? Of the, the one of Y? Y? No. The one of that? Yes, for, to communicate to Y. What is the physical address? Which is? Zero, zero, 010. 010. Exactly. And the source address is 0810. Okay? So that's, uh, 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 that's what we should <coughs> have. So, so for layer 2, uh, link layer frame, I need to add a header here. Okay? And this header will have a source address of this and the destination address of this, not of Y. I don't know the physical address of Y. At this point, I don't know the physical address of Y. And I shouldn't have to. Um, so that's the physical address uh, of the source and the destination. So now, this can get me all the way to the router. 
okay? So from the router, if I need to send it to Y, what is the next physical address I should have? 0, B, 3, 1, and what is the source address? 0, 0, 20, bravo, okay. <clears throat> so that's, uh, this is the new physical address. So now it can get me here, okay. So now I'm getting to a link which uses PPP, okay. I don't need to specify any physical address in that case. Because once I send it, it will reach to, uh, uh, to this router no matter what. So in that case, we use even FFF. I don't have to specify any source address and I don't have to specify any specific destination address. So I can use all Fs and I can get here. Okay? So this is the exception now. For PPP, I don't have to specify any physical address. Um, so when I reach here, now this router knows that uh, it needs to send it to a specific host uh, uh, that has this physical address. X doesn't know the physical address of Y, but this router does. This router does know that the, the physical address of the machine that has this IP address is actually 0B20. Uh, so in that case, the physical address will have to change to uh, 0B20 and the source address will be 0C22. Okay? So um, in brief, the, the physical address is for device-to-device -device communication, so it has to change between devices. IP header does not change end-to-end. -end. We'll talk about some exceptions of this, but for now, you just need to know that IP address will not, should not change end-to-end. -end. So the source address and the destination address uh, 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 in the IP header will not change. Okay? So when, when it reaches to Y, what happens is that Y knows that the destination physical address is 0B20. Okay, so this means that I am the destination. I'm the physical destination. Okay, so automatically Y will extract the data link layer header. So it's chopped, completely gone, right? And, and then it will send it to the network layer of Y. So now this frame or this packet, I should, I should call it, not frame anymore, it's not a frame anymore, it's a packet. Packet is the protocol data unit within the network layer. So this packet now exists in Y. So Y, what, what Y will do is that it will check, does the destination address match my own destination address? If the answer is yes, then it will push it up. If the answer is no, then I should think, am I a router? If I am a router, then okay, it's okay I'm not the destination address because this is my job. I know, I know where to deliver it. I know how to deliver it. So I, I should check my routing table to know how to deliver it. Right? So if the answer is no, then if I'm a router, then that's fine. It, it's expected. But if I'm not a router, if I'm a switch, then this message must have, have reached here by mistake. I will discard it. There's no other way. Okay, so if, 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 the, <clears throat> if the answer is yes, and I'm, I'm the final destination like Y, I will push it up. If the answer is no, then I'm not the final destination. Okay, so do I have any information how to deliver it to the final destination? For a router, the answer should be yes. In that case, it should deliver it. But for any other device, the answer should be no, and in that case, should discard it. No, how, no, because why? Why the final destination? The destination address of Y, which is this this uh, uh, IP address, matches the IP address here. So it will send it up. It will send it up. This means that it should be sent to a specific application within that host. And for that, we need another type of address, which we will talk about in a minute. So now I know that I'm the right host, okay? So who was the, who was the, uh, the final decision in terms of an application? Because this host runs hundreds of applications. Could be, there could be like web browsers, there could be FTP, uh, clients, so many things, right? 
So just the fact that the packet arrives here to that host, it doesn't mean that there is an application that asks for it. So I have to, I, ha I need to check some extra information in the uh, layer 4 header to know where to deliver it to in terms of an end application. Okay? So IP will, will get me all the way to the host. But then IP is gone. I, don't, I, don't, I, I cannot use it anymore. So now, in order to deliver that content to the right application, which in that case should be a browser, a web browser, I, I need one extra piece of information. But now I'm at least at the destination. I arrived physically to the destination, and now I need to display it. So, <clears throat> so in that case, I will not use the IP address, of course. I will get to the, the data, and from the data, I will have to extract the TCP header and, uh, 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 and deliver it to a specific application. What we call, now we have the, uh, 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 the, the packet in the host, but now to deliver it to a specific application, we need another piece of information, which is what we call it layer four. So in the layer four header, this contains what we call port numbers. And these port numbers, maybe some of you have, have, yes, you know, yes. have dealt with it before, uh, and if not, you will have to deal with it uh, through this course. Uh, the port number is what we uh, sometimes specify if you have heard about port 80, for example, for, uh, for web server, many of the web servers they use port 80. And if it, if it uses HTTPS, then it uses port 443, something like that. So, um, so these ports specify which application on that host okay, that uh, uh, originates the, uh, the packet or that's uh, uh, expected to receive that packet. Okay? So layer three, layer four, sorry, layer four address contains port number. And again, the exact same concept applies here. We should have a destination port number and a source port number. The source port number will be the port number that identifies the client or the application on the source that originated this packet. Okay? So uh, the destination port uh, uh, identifies the destination application and the source port identifies the source application. So, <clears throat> so the destination number, for example, for a specific uh, 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 application could be like for, for web server, we commonly use port 80. Port 80 is for uh, 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 for a web server, not a web client. So when you start, like assume you start multiple browsers in your machine, okay? So one goes to google.com, one goes to uh, uh, yahoo.com, and, and so on. Each instance of the browser will have a different source port number, okay? Each one will have a different source port number, which get gets assigned to it by the operating system, okay? But the server itself is commonly uh, using port 80. So most of the servers, even google.com, yahoo.com, they use port 80 for the web server, okay? So when we specify google.com, google.com gets mapped to a specific IP address, okay? We don't specify a port port number when we say that, which means that by default we mean a port 80. So by default it's port 80. So that's enough to identify the machine on the internet and the application on this machine that we want to get to, right? So just by saying google.com. So by saying google.com we specify two pieces of information. The IP address of google.com and we'll know how to map from this uh, 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 from this uh, text to, uh, uh, to a specific IP. And we didn't specify a port number, although we can. In some cases, I mean, I'm not sure if some of you have tried to specify a port number on the URL itself, but you, you, you can specify a specific port on the URL. 
In some, in some cases, you can. Okay? But if you don't specify, this means that by default, port is 80, which targets HTTP, HTTP protocol. Okay? So, when you start a new browser instance, source port number will be the port number that gets assigned by the operating system to that particular uh, 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 browser instance, and the destination port number will be by default 80 unless you want to specify it manually. Okay? <clears throat> so this allows you to have an end-to-end -end, uh, 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 communication between one application on one host and another application on an end host. So when we say google.com, we mean the IP of that, of that server using port 80. When the server on port 80 wants to send back anything to the client, it knows the source IP address, so it should know how to get to the host, and it knows the source port number, right, from the, uh, uh, from the message that, that gets sent to the server. So the server will always know its way back to the source, both using IP and port number, because the, the client is the one that always initiates the communication. When you initiate the communication, you have to specify your IP address and your port number. Okay? So when it goes to the server, the server will know how to send it back to you. That's why the server is the one that always receives requests. And it provides some service to the client in terms of content. But the client is always the one that initiates the communication. Okay? So with that said, Port numbers for many applications are by default uh, uh, known, and we call it well-known ports. We call it like this, well-known ports. Uh, and these are the default port numbers for these types of applications or services. So uh, HTTP that's used for web browsing has port 80. Telnet has port 23. Which means, again, that when you tell net to a server, you don't have to specify a specific port number. And that by default will use port 23. So when you start any Telnet server on a machine, it will by default use port 23. Unless you specify otherwise. If you specify otherwise, then the client should know. The client should uh, uh, write the new port number when it tries to Telnet to the server. So unless you use these uh, uh, um, uh, default port numbers or well-known port numbers, you have to specify the port explicitly in the code, which, which is part of the URL if you want to use web browsing, and it's part of the uh, Telnet uh, server address, uh, and it's part of FTP server address, and so on. So FTP uses port 20 and 21, which uses two ports, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to know the difference. It's used. No. No. It's not for something. No. It's for data communication and for control. It looks like it looks like you're a bit ahead in the in the lab. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So in the lab, you you must have yeah gone through this. So uh, uh, FTP uses two ports and SMTP uses port twenty five. We'll go through each of these applications in details starting next time. So. so starting from next time, we'll go through uh, the application layer. So that's the end of the high-level overview that we have uh, gone through. Starting from next time, we'll go through each layer and we'll study the protocols in it in, in details.